Your family traditions, culture, and stories are your legacy. So is your health history. Join the All of Us Research Program and share your health information. Through research, your legacy can help build a healthier future for all of us. It is an honor to have all of you here tonight with us. Before I get started in acknowledgments, Everybody give Jada a round of applause again. And Jada, this job has many demands as mayor. And I think you told a very compelling story. And I'm very, very proud of you. Uh, I want to thank your teacher. I want to thank your mom, your grandmother, and your little brother here, your parents, and all of your extended family for being here to support you and cheer you on. And so, I guess I got to come to Oliver and spend some more time with you and your classmates, but I'm very, very proud of you, y'all. So, thank you, Jada, for reminding us about the importance. <laughs> Jada, thank you for reminding us why, why we do this job, which includes our superintendent that's present, your principal that's present, as well as all other educators in this room and not in this room. With that, um, let me do some acknowledgments, and I need to make sure. Rick Bowser told you all about um, my throat issues. There's sinus drainage, so I don't want anybody to think I'm giving y'all the cooties or anything. <laughs> You're good. Um, but I want to start um, by acknowledging some people by name, and one is my wife, Kendra Woodfin, who was present. Let's see, I, I do not do this job by myself, anybody. Um, I have another elected body, our legislative branch of government in the form of our Birmingham City Council that I am so honored to partner with, work with, advocate with on your behalf and solve issues collectively on your behalf. So I start with, and you can please stand when I call you by name because you're worthy of being called by name. I'll start with the president of the Birmingham City Council, Dr. Darrell O'Quinn. Um, but as I continue, um, I also, it also includes the pro tem of the Birmingham City Council, um, Wardeen Alexander, who could not be here. We have representing District 1, Clinton Woods, who is here. Can everybody see him? Raise your hand. Or you are. I see. These lights are very bright. Don't turn them down. You're good. <laughs> representing District, City Council District 2, Hunter Williams, who I believe is here as well. Councilor Valerie Abbott represents District 3. She told me in advance she couldn't be here. She's at another important meeting, as, as important as this. So I do want to acknowledge her. Representing District 4, City Council, is J.T. Moore. <laughs> Crystal Smitherman represents District 6. Carol Clark represents District 8. And Latonya Tate, who cannot be here as well, represents District 9. I thought it was important that I take the time to not only acknowledge them as a body, but acknowledge them individually, sh share their name as well as the district they represent because we work together on your behalf. So, counselors from the bottom of my heart, thank you for what you do, and I'm glad to be in the trenches with you to, to continue to move Birmingham forward. I also want to acknowledge our superintendent of Birmingham City Schools, Dr. Mark Sullivan. Could you please stand, sir? Um, along with his school board members, his principals, and his entire staff and team, thank you for the work you're doing on behalf of our children every single day. Um, I also want to acknowledge all of our neighborhood officers are present. If you're a neighborhood officer, please stand or wave your hand and be acknowledged. So they get a lot of slack, and I want to thank the neighborhood presidents, vice presidents, and secretaries for what they do on behalf of their individual neighborhood every day in our 99 neighborhoods. In addition to that, I have a lot of team members here who are staff members. They are department heads and deputy department um, directors. I do not do this work alone. Um, there's an entire team, 3,000 plus employees, 
the people I just named in the form of staff, directors and deputy directors, and senior team members, they lead these different departments and the divisions, 29 plus every day. So I want to thank them for their hard work. Um, they work seven days a week. Trust me, they work. They, their job is not nine to five. They're always on like I am. They have to be responsive as I am. And so collectively, I just want to say thank you. I see you, acknowledge you, and appreciate the hard work you do on behalf of the employees we serve as well as the citizens we serve. But I also got some other partners here, which are Forging Justice Partners, our ACE graduates, and a special recognition to all of our everyday citizens who are in this room and not in this room for making Birmingham the city it is. Um, before I go on, it turns out that they're not giving me a lot of time to be up here with you tonight. So we will not get a chance to take a deep dive into every single issue, concern, or thing you care about. However, this document is very, very rich. And so what we are not able to cover verbally in this presentation tonight, I really hope you take this home, find some time to read it, dig deep into it, because I think you will find it that it is very informative and provides a lot of information and detail of what we've done, what we're doing, and what we're doing next on your behalf. So I wanted to say that. Again, I am so honored to spend a few moments this evening talking about Birmingham's journey, everybody. You know, throughout the calendar the year, the city of Birmingham has acknowledged and celebrated the groundbreaking change of the year 1963. That year was a watershed moment for the civil rights movement, and that should not be a secret to anybody in this room. Because it was a year that we saw unimaginable evil enacted upon precious, innocent souls. We saw that the specter of intolerance continue to try to divide our communities and continue to block progress. But what I also like about 1963 is because we also saw a movement that broke the chains of bigotry. We saw children mature, mature into heroes literally right before our eyes, bravely marching, singing, fighting for the freedoms we all now enjoy. And some of those heroes are sitting among us today and just a moment of truth. Without them, I would not be standing here today as mayor, and some of you all would not be seated in this room. What we saw in 1963 was a community rewriting their destiny. They knew they had to be better, to do better, not just for themselves, everyone, but for generations to come, so Jada could be up here and present to all of us. And with that same passion, with that same passion to rebuild their community, the same spirit to uplift their neighbors, with the same foresight to look well beyond the moment and to work to establish a stronger future. With those lessons learned, tonight, tonight we share our blueprint for 2024 and beyond. It is a plan driven by the spirit of change, that powers Birmingham's legacy and created with the same forward-thinking vision that made Birmingham a beacon for progress worldwide. And as we continue to change the world, I thought it was important to stop and for all of us to have a moment and share with you how we take care of home first. Last month, we marked a very significant milestone we're now two years into our second term. And so tonight I want to take us, all of us in this room and all of us not in this room, together on a journey of how far we've come over the last two years into our second term here in 2023. And we start that journey by sharing the story of that mother and child or that grandmother and grandchild. In 2019, I encouraged all of you, I encourage all of you to picture a mother or a grandmother in Birmingham. And she isn't just any mother or grandmother. She is a mother or a grandmother, many of us. Many of us know. 
a woman whose roots run deep in her neighborhood, the neighborhood she's lived most of her life in, of her adult life, that is, and the neighborhood she's currently raising her child or her grandchild in. She loves her neighborhood deeply, but she wants better for her neighborhood. And in 2017, we told her and her neighbors that they deserve better. And so back in 2017, I want to tell you and describe to you this mother or grandmother's reality. Back then, when she stood on her porch and she looked to her right, she saw an ugly, dilapidated home that had been vacant for years. When she looked to her left, she saw an overgrown empty lot that possibly had rodents in it. And when she looked in front of her, right in front of her home, she would see a cracked sidewalk that was either broken or buckling. And her child or grandchild couldn't even play on that sidewalk and or ride their bicycles safely on that sidewalk. Mm. Further out, her streets were in disrepair and haven't been paved in years. And she was always nervous about driving across it for legitimate fear of more damage to her car because she was trying to avoid potholes. And when she walked her child or grandchild down to that neighborhood park, when she got there, she realized there wasn't necessarily adequate playground equipment to play in safely. But they hurry home anyway because when it was getting dark, the street lights didn't work. And it, when it was time for dinner, when it was time for dinner, she was reminded that she lived in a food desert and didn't live in proximity of stores that provided healthy food choices and options. Other than the dollar store down the street, I don't have to tell anybody in this room, her options were few. And the worst part, the worst part was that at night when she and her child or grandchild would lay their head down, their sleep was unfortunately often interrupted by gunshots. That was then when I want to take you more on this journey about, but this is now. The journey of now. Because by the end of our first term, here's what we did for that mother Here's what we did for that grandmother. We got more aggressive with our reabatement program, as well as increase our funding for our land bank to build more single family homes, not only in that neighborhood, but in that same empty lot to her left. We invested in our sidewalks to make sure that that sidewalk was more walkable and bikeable for that child or that grandchild. And we also put millions into street paving to make sure that not only her street was paved when she pulled out of her driveway, but it was also pothole free. We made sure to close out neighborhood park projects that have been delayed for years. I see the president of Wildham in here, I don't have to tell you, Wildham Park was one of those. One Pratt Park was one of those. And in addition, we continued our partnership, everybody, with Alabama Power to extend our LED light program to light up more of our neighborhood parks because our residents need that. Simply put, our first term was marked by tearing things down that did not work and laying the foundation, laying the groundwork for a better path forward. To me, that not only speaks towards outdated internal processes that no longer serve the city well, but it also meant removing dilapidated housing and reimagining major sites that we all know. For example, Banks Middle School, Caraway Hospital, Inslee High School, Southtown Public Housing, and Ramsey McCormick, just to name a few. But it also included the empty lot upon which Protective Stadium now sits. That was a step in the right direction, no question. But there was more work to be done for that same mother or grandmother who had that child or grandchild. Two years ago, you honored us with the opportunity to continue the work we did in the first few years. We did it through COVID. 
And I'm telling you, those were some tough times. It is fair to say that we grew together. And if, I'm, if I can be vulnerable enough, there were, so, there were many moments in 2020 where some of us even cried together. We made it through the hard reset that came with those major moments. COVID, civil unrest, a re-election campaign as well as the World Games, committing to something that I will continue to say as long as I serve in this position. Progress together. Together. And so that takes us to today, 2023. The question is very simple. What have we done for residents like that mother or grandmother? What have we done for our families? Well, first, we listened to our residents and took major steps in addressing food deserts. And one of those food deserts was in Five Points West. And with the opening of Food Giant, I want to bring you back to April of that year, focusing on a simple, basic need, everyone, food, healthy food. In the words of A.G. Gaston, we found a need and we filled it. Because when we think about, when I think about that day, we had citizens lined up as early as 5 a.m. and 6 a.m., a sea of people in the line just to have access to healthy food. It's the small things that matter to our citizens that we have to deliver on. But let's also go back and talk about that child or that grandchild. Everything we've done has been to increase opportunities for our children and our grandchildren. That literally drives what we do at City Hall. That drives this administration, that drives, that is the heartbeat of what we do for our children, for our grandchildren. And so I think it's important that we start with a program called Birmingham Talks. Birmingham Talks is a free citywide program that works with children from birth to three years of age to help build lifetime literacy. They work with both our children and our parents as well as caregivers to stimulate vocabulary and brain development. Some of you may have a question, why this program? The answer is simple. Because we have the data that continues to show us that the building blocks between the ages of one and five is where we need to make the necessary investments for our next generation. Simply put, we're planting the seeds for a lifetime of learning earlier. Birmingham Talks has secured more than 3.5 million in funds and pledges, including a historic $1 million investment from the city of Birmingham. Now, once that child gets, or that grandchild gets older and makes it to the third grade, if there are gaps, that child or grandchild will have the assistance of Page Pals. Page Pals isn't going anywhere. And so thanks to the assistance of the Department of Youth Services led by Galvin Billups and his team, Page Pals is a reading program designed to produce more effective third grade student readers, both inside and outside of the classroom. But this moment also requires me to be very brutally honest with everybody. Because when I tell you that this is a very critical, critical age to increase literacy, through the help of volunteers, we are providing free tutoring to these students. Young, bright, talented students like Jada, everybody. Young students like Jada, who we just heard from earlier. By the way, did an incredible job. i got to say it again. <laughs> but this is who we're fighting for. Her and her classmates. Her and her schoolmates. Her and the third graders across the entire district. And so if you're wondering to yourself, hey, that's cool. How can I get involved? We got you. I want you to stop what you're doing right now and sign up. Here's the Q card, Q code. Sign up now at behamufirst.org. That is behamufirst.org because we are building a coalition of 750 tutors. The good news is that we're a little over halfway there. 
But it is so important that if you're in this room and you're not a part of this yet, that you join this cause. That you join this cause not just for the future of our workforce, everybody, but for the future of our most precious resources, our children. That doesn't work for you. We have representatives in the back when this is over that I want you to see at the Division of Youth Services table to sign up for an opportunity of page pass. So we're not letting you off the hook easy. But more importantly, trust me when I tell you, Jada and every third grader needs you. And so as that third grader, as that child, as that grandchild gets older, we have to touch on an initiative that is near and dear to my heart also. And that is the Birmingham Promise, which I hope is near and dear to your heart as well. Because it's our free scholarship and $15 an hour apprenticeship program. And through the promise, what we are doing is ensuring that graduates of Birmingham City Schools can attend any public college or university in the state of Alabama tuition free. Just to date, because you deserve this information, just to date, 5.5 million in scholarships have been distributed to nearly 1,000 Birmingham City School students since 2020. <laughs> now, I appreciate that applause because I had a line of here that I was going to say if you missed that, that's 1,000 students. But everybody, that's such a game changer for our next generation. Such a game changer. Because this is how we build our workforce. This is how we retain talent in our state. This is how we break generational curses and provide opportunities for the next generation. And on the subject of our workforce, I'm proud to say that we continue to make breakthroughs. The city of Birmingham is one of 32 cities nationwide to receive nearly $11 million grant called the Good Jobs Challenge from the U.S. Department of Commerce. These funds will help us build a pipeline. I want you to imagine building a, a workforce pipeline of healthcare and digital healthcare workers, giving underserved communities opportunities to receive high quality healthcare jobs. These are the building blocks of our future. But y'all already should know that I'm coming back I'm turning us back to that neighborhood in which that mother or that grandmother resides. Because everything we do is through that lens. As that mother or grandmother stands on her porch, as she looks out at the street in front of her, she sees that not only her street is paved, I'm repeating myself, but that 173 miles of streets have been paved since 2017 which includes 50 miles of street paves just in 2023. Now, when I first saw this number, I was like, okay, who, who can picture that? Well, 173 miles, that's a stretch of road longer than the distance between Birmingham and Atlanta. And our crews have made that ride so much smoother. But also, more than 8,900 potholes have been repaired just this year alone. Shout out to the Department of Public Works. We see... Yeah, that's a lot of potholes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but as she drives around the city, as that mother or grandmother drives around the city, she'll see that 1,500 plus blighted structures have been torn down in the past six years, including 104 just in the year 2023. But let's stick to the topic of housing for a bit, because that once vibrant neighborhood where that mother or grandmother resides in is now seeing new residential opportunities for a desire to have more neighbors. And so in July, we were awarded a $50 million choice grant for the Smithfield, College Hills, and Graymont community. Birmingham is the first city in the state of Alabama to receive this federal grant. And we're partnering with organizations like HABD, UAB, and United Way to provide more quality housing options totaling almost $300 million.
Make no mistake, everyone. Birmingham. Birmingham, Alabama is the economic center of our state. And this secures our role as a key player in this region. But continuing on the path of more tools in a toolbox related to addressing housing, you can't forget about the existing homeowners, who so many are our seniors and elders. But that is where our critical home repair program comes in, which helps low to moderate income residents with issues like leaky roofs, adding wheelchair access and other exterior issues they may have on their home. We are proud to say just in a few months, we have raised the scope to 250 homes, which has tripled the number of homes we've served in the past three years. Additionally, towards this program, we have allocated, we've allocated more than six million for this program. And so on the subject of homes, there is more great news to share. We know that homelessness has been a pressing issue in the city. But that is why I am happy to announce that the city of Birmingham has named three finalists in the search for facilitators for the Home for All Safe Sleep Pilot Program. Now that is a mouthful. So I will make it plainer for you. This program will help us reduce homelessness, decrease homelessness, decrease our neighbors who have no shelter from being on the streets. And so after a nationwide call for proposals, I'm excited to announce those three tonight, which include Faith Chapel Care Center as one, AIDS Alabama as two, and Urban Alchemy as three were selected. Recall back in January of this year, the city approved a $1 million bid thanks to the city council's vote and support to purchase of micro shelters for our chronically unhoused residents. These shelters will be assembled on a dedicated site for safe sleep, shelter, and support because that's what they deserve, everybody. And I just want to pause again to just say thank you. Not only thank you to those three finalists, but I also want to thank our internal team for their commitment to keeping us honest on addressing these issues of how do we decrease homelessness in our community? How do we serve our unhoused population? Thank you so much. But we can't forget about the massive $141 million boost on the Federal American Recovery Plan Act. That's also a mouthful. Let me tell you what that money was used for. Affordable housing, more blight removal, healthy food initiatives, grant matches. It's all federal funds being directed back into your communities, serving you, serving us. And speaking of the American Rescue Plan, again, I think this is a good time to pause and thank our city council for how they've used their funds. I'm in the trenches with them, so you should know that they spent a significant amount of money on supporting neighborhood-centric plans and programs to boost quality of life in the neighborhoods that they represent and serve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues who are not here. Mr. President and counselors, it did not go unnoticed. Thank you so much. Look, everybody. There's a lot to celebrate. From our city playing host to international events like the World Games 2022, if you recall, where 99 nations and 3,400 athletes came to our hometown for a historic event. No more debt, by the way. I'll pay it. <laughs> to our booming entertainment scene with major names like Drake and Garth Brooks, who y'all saw up there a few minutes ago. Filling the magic of our city. Birmingham, Alabama has so much momentum. But I am a I'm very pragmatic. We also know there is a lot more work to do, much more work to do. Because as I mentioned earlier, if you were listening, when that mother or grandmother and her child or grandchild laid their heads down at night, 
I told you that their sleep is often interrupted by gunshots. And so let me be totally transparent. Public safety, particularly related to gun violence, is still a major issue in our city. One that even on a night like last night, I was not able to sleep. And so, in this hand, I want to applaud the Birmingham Police Department for their work in taking nearly 17,000 illegal guns off the streets during our administration. But it's not enough. More illegal guns can get into the hands of people in our streets faster than y'all can walk in the store and buy some candy. And so I've often said that public safety cannot just be a BPD issue alone. It has to be a community issue. We all must have buy-in. And so what you'll see us do in 2024 is throw out some ideas that will be different. They will be bold. They will not be comfortable. It will require change. And we should take the risk. And if we fail, we can go back to doing what we've been doing. But I want you to come along with me as we roll it out. I hope y'all are cool with that. Yes, but let me tell you what we've also done in addition to taking those 17,000 illegal guns off the street. We spend $8 million annually for gun violence prevention, reentry programs, and mental health services for our students. Our conflict resolution programs, which first started with high school males, has now expanded to female students, elementary students, and middle school students, and our housing authority as a partner, thanks to the Common Ground pro program. There's an entire generation, everybody, that has been taught, if someone hits you, hit them back. What do you think happens when they become adults? And so it was important for us in the next generation to teach them conflict early, conflict resolution early. But we've also contributed millions as a partner to the Jefferson County Department of Health, UAB and the Offender Alumni Association, VIP Squared, which is a hospital-linked violence inter intervention program to decrease retaliation, gun violence in our community. And we continue our support of the Restore Juvenile Reentry Program, which provides support for youths 16 to 19 of age who are currently part of the state's Department of Youth system. Short way of saying it, these are young people who are locked up in state custody. And in an effort to provide more positive influences, in an effort to provide more skills for our young people, the city of Birmingham has committed one million to our safe haven programs at Birmingham Recreation Centers. And we continue to also support something that's very, very critical. Financial literacy. If we ever want to put predatory cash checking places out of business, we better do everything we can to teach the next generation what financial literacy is. But there's more. We've launched the Connect Birmingham program where we're encouraging business owners to register their security cameras with us to help us identify issues in case of a crime or an incident on their property or in proximity of their property. And I want to stop and emphasize that the privacy of those who participate in this program will be protected, nor will footage be used without your knowledge or consent. But this is an important step in keeping our streets safer. It is our desire to move at a quicker speed of taking criminals and those who commit crimes against persons and crimes against property off our streets. And it turns out, with more access to cameras for existing business owners, this speeds up the investigative process. So we need you to partner with us. If you know somebody that's a business owner in this room, if you are a business owner in this room, here's another cue card for you to sign up. By the way, Show of hands, residents who have cameras on their home, Ring or anybody else. You can participate too. And so I highly encourage you to please visit BirminghamAL.gov 
slash connect Birmingham. Again, that is birminghamal.gov slash connect Birmingham or go to this and scan and help us be more efficient in our investigative processes and take criminals off the street. So it's simple, everybody. As we look ahead, as we look ahead, what does the blueprint tell us? Well, we've spent our first term listening to your needs, seeing the community through the eyes of that mother or grandmother, and from there, tearing down what wasn't working. Old buildings, old systems, old ways of thinking, old barriers that block progress. And in term two, we're rebuilding. We're restoring faith to our young people by providing them with opportunities to achieve their potential. We're making roads smoother. We're making parks more accessible. We're building homes, and most importantly, we're building systems to allow new homeowners to achieve their dreams. And we're rebuilding our reputation in the tech and small business space, opening doors for entrepreneurs to thrive and create in our city. And we're showing the entertainment world that Birmingham is indeed a destination city. This blueprint, this blueprint isn't just of charts and lines and boxes. It is a roadmap for our success, a path paved by the blood, the sweat, and the tears of our fearless forefathers and our foremothers. We're simply building upon the foundation that they laid. We're building a better, a brighter, and a bolder Birmingham for that mother, for that grandmother, for that child, for that grandchild, but also for you, for your family, and for generations to come. From 1963 to 2023, we're rewriting our future. This blueprint is Birmingham's manifesto for our next great breakthrough. And so thank you, thank you, and thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of Birmingham's journey. Thank you for being part of Birmingham's fabric. Thank you for being part of Birmingham's DNA and doing everything you can as an active participant and citizen of this city to make Birmingham the best version of itself. Thank you so much. Do you know what's happening in Birmingham? Download the What's Happening Birmingham app today on Android, iPhone, and iPad for free. Get info on everything you need to know about local news, events, businesses, restaurants, and more. Visit our website, whatshappeningbham.com, or follow us on social media at Happening Beham for more information. Download the What's Happening Birmingham app today. Your source for everything Birmingham.